All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting here continuing with the series on the bulk carrier groups. Now, I tell you what, since that very first video, a lot of people have asked me to uh, LWRC. Uh, we've got SOF. Uh, we got uh, Instructor Chad. Um, there's a lot of other things. Guys, I can only do what I can do. But I will tell you this, that if you're not taking an opportunity to learn every single day, well, you 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 really used your time not as wisely. But anyway, one of the things though that uh, I was wanting to expand on was the um, the bulk carrier, the bulk carrier group, and where these things and all these dimensions come from. Well, uh, I'll put the link down below, and those are the full blown set of drawings uh, that these things originated from, which is really cool. So what I did was. I identified all the parts and pieces that I felt are important to us, you and me. And because of that, I want to go through and I want to show you some things. Now, this is the uh, Cryptics Coding uh, BCG. This is one of the ones that everybody says, you got to go get one of those guys. So actually, uh, Mr. Gary Huffman uh, lives, or his shop is only a couple minutes away from where I live. Now, one of the things I want to watch, watch this, man. This is pretty incredible. If you take that cam pan, watch what happens. That is some slick as you know what stuff. But what I'm not going to do right now is I'm not going to do a review or anything on this particular bulk carrier group. Uh, but one of the things that I did was I went into Gary's shop and he set me down and showed me all the cool things about what makes the difference in a bulk carrier group. Now, if you go to his website, he's going to show you that the carrier is made by Toolcraft. Now, he does the coatings right there in uh, Denver, North Carolina, right down the street from Mooresville, where I grew up. Uh, and he made me build this thing all the way from in inserting the uh, ejector pin to putting uh, O-rings on it and uh, install, showing me the, actually the difference between uh, what the difference is between this, this is not a cotter pin, this is a firing pin retaining pin, and the edges are beveled and round versus just chopped off. Those are the differences between a cheap bolt carrier group and an expensive bolt carrier group. So, anyway, we'll go through a lot of this stuff, and uh, what I want to do is, in this video, we're going to talk about this dude right here. This is a firing pin. Now, I've gone out and taken the liberty of purchasing a, a much better instrument than I normally would use. And I mean, to be perfectly honest with you guys, uh, this is not a Moto Toyo. It's an, uh, what is this, Origin Cal eye gauging. And this is a good one. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews on this thing, and this is why I bought it. I picked it up on Amazon for like $54. But what we're going to do here, this is pretty cool. We're going to take this little diagram right here. Okay, I'm going to hold it up, as you can see, and there are dimensions on it. And what I want to do is, guys, the firing pin is a firing pin. But I, I will tell you this, I've had firing pins break on me. I have broken this little piece off right here. So what are we doing? I, I guess what I'm trying to convey to you is that when you can go online and you can look at this stuff, you can go ahead and you can mic out this, these things right here. So say, for instance, the overall length of a firing pin mil spec it should be 3.277 so let's see here what is this guy right here I'm gonna hold it up right there and this one it reads 3.2750 not bad I wonder if I got that thing in there straight enough 7755. Okay, so I'm going to give it a benefit of the doubt. But that's down to the thousands. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's talk about the distance between this heel right here and the end of the bolt carrier group. We can go ahead and measure that. And we're looking at 2.704, and that's what it reads, plus or minus two, uh, two thousands. Pretty cool stuff. Um, one of the other measurements we can do is from the end of the, uh, right there to here. <laughs> I don't know what these things are called. I don't really care. But the idea here, guys, is, uh, and, and what I do, 
uh, for a living, I look at drawings every single day. So this is supposed to be 0 0.70. And you can actually clamp it down, make it a little closer than that, but 0 0.570, so 0 0.572. So we know that this guy is in pretty well uh, spec. Hold on one second. Let's take a look at this. 0 0.154 is the diameter right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. 0.153. The diameter down here on this part is 0.103 plus or minus one thousandths. Let's see. There we go. And then on the back side right here is 0.156 plus or minus one four thousandths. 156 right there. Isn't that cool? So one of the things I want to show you real quickly, I'm going to hit pause, stand by. Okay, so this is the tool craft. Uh, nickel boron and as you can see right there nickel boron um, and when I purchased this thing I, I was out I always take them out I play with them and try to figure it out this is one of the reasons why I wanted to start off with this guy right here and this is the issue that I had now when I first of all when I push the firing pin into the back of the bolt that's where it stops without having some type of pressure like there. So there's something going on either in the bolt, and we'll get into the bolt stuff later on, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to take, this is 154 right here. Let's go ahead, make sure these return to zero, and we have 154. Now let's see if the issue, no, the issue is not the firing pin dimensions. See right here, we're supposed to be at 103. We're perfect right there. Out on the end, we're supposed to be actually 0 0.0595. We're a little thick, but if you get all the way out onto the end, 0 0.0, so there it is, 0 0.095, 0 0.0595. Just like it says. So they did a great job on this. So what that means to me is that we have an issue inside that bolt. All right, so one of the things I wanted to do is go ahead and put this together. I didn't want you guys guessing. All right, we'll start off by saying this. The firing pin, we know because the drawing says it right here. The diameter of the firing pin should be 0.154. Now, to eliminate any kind of failures, a lot of these guys put these things together at 0.153, which we found out these were both 153 there. And then we have one that is 153 there. All right. Now, this is a pin gauge. This is Vermont gauge. This is a 156, which is what is supposed to be able to go into this guy right here, okay? So let's do this. I want to check the dimensions on this guy real quickly, one, five, six. You can see that right there. Now, if you recall, we were having issues with that, what do you call this thing? The firing pin going inside. See right there. All right, so let's do this. You've got the two pins here, and this is a go gauge for the interior of the rear of the bolt. And there you go. See how that works? See how smooth that thing slid in there? As it goes in and out, in and out, just like that. Now, here's the tool craft. That's it. And it literally will stand on in like that. So that's one of the things I wanted to show you. Uh, it stops right there, and I am not going to push it through. So, matter of fact, it won't even... Let's see if I can get you to focus in right there. There we go. It will not go through the cam hole pin or the cam hole. It will not go through that opening. It'll go through just fine here. And there. It'll stand up. That's it. All right, I wanted to show you guys that real quickly to let you know we're, uh, we're learning. Isn't it fun? 
Uh, just wanted to go through and show you the first step of this thing. We're going to learn it one page at a time. We're going to talk about it. What are the dimensions? Why are the dimensions important? And we're going to talk about some other things. And then I'm going to show you this is good old fella right here. This is the WMD bolt with about 100,000 rounds to it. And she's still humping. The problem is the rings are just non-existent in it so anyway that's it talking about firing pins guys if you like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already done so support red white and blue god bless america god bless men women in uniform 24 7 you can see it it has a actually you can hear it I guess it probably would wear out, but I just need to know why it's doing that. It's 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 got some movement in there, stuff going on in there. But we're gonna go ahead and yeah, we got the pin gauges to do it. So that's it, guys. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform who fight for our Constitution 24/7 for our freedom. Because freedom's not free. This is gonna be a lot of fun, and I want it to be a learning experience for both of us. It's Code Boy 32. I'm out.